the big chip is back. And I'm referring to that chip on the shoulder of Alexander Volkanovsky, the same one that's propelling him into this fight with Islam Makhachev on 11 days notice. And although he proved to us last time that he was able to hang in there with Makhachev and he was right there neck and neck with him skill-wise, we can't write him off. But I don't think he's going to win this one. In fact, I think he's going to get knocked out. And that's right. If you're a Volkanovsky fan, we're just about a week away from us tasting this first real devastating defeat. And why am I picking Makhachev to knock him out in this fight? Well, it's going to boil down to a few things because I actually think this is going to be a competitive fight until it's not. I think it's going to be very similar to the first one. It's just that I don't believe in Alexander Volkanovsky's strength and conditioning in the later rounds. And Makhachev's a guy that can hit hard. And Makhachev's going to be even bigger in the cage this time because he's going to have more time between the weigh-ins until the night of the fight to rehydrate, to carb up. And although Alexander Volkanovsky may even be better, as I made a whole video about how he can beat Makhachev, and I think the distance management that he worked on preparing for Yair Rodriguez can help him a lot, and he certainly is capable of pulling off an upset, if he doesn't knock Makhachev out in the early rounds with a pitch-perfect shot, because let's be honest, he's going to need to land the perfect strike. I just don't think he's got the power to hit Makhachev and knock him out with a shot that Makhachev may anticipate. If he doesn't put him away early, I just think he's going to come crashing down. And I'm talking about the strength and conditioning. I'm talking about the fact that Alexander Volkanovsky, and I know everyone's talking about it, but it's this elbow surgery. And it's the fact that he's kind of sucked himself down to a featherweight frame. And the most important thing that I want to get at in making this argument and making this prediction for why I believe Makhachev's going to knock him out is the fact that in order for Alexander Volkanovsky to just start getting to the gas tank of Makhachev, to start to break him a little bit in the later rounds, and I mean, when I say break him, I mean to start to really test Makhachev. In order to get to those places in the fifth round where he was able to knock Makhachev down and beat him up, he had to go through so much adversity. I mean, think about the first round alone. He was knocked down to one knee. He was taken down and put in a neck crank. He had to fight off that submission in round two and round three. Aside from just the striking where he was getting tagged with big shots, Makhachev had shot at least four or five takedowns between both of those rounds, and Volkanovsky had to work his ass off to stuff them. He really did. And he was taken down in these rounds too and had to work hard to get back up to his feet. And just think about the level of strength he needed to have to be able to get Makhachev off of him to stay standing in those middle rounds where they were striking. And now we're going to talk about the fourth round where he was taken down, he was held down. Yeah, Makhachev didn't do a whole lot. I'm going to equate that to skill. But think about the fifth, deep waters. Volkanovsky still had his gas tank. He was stuffing a couple of takedowns in that round as well, which ultimately led to Makhachev being a little bit more vulnerable. And I just saw so much adversity that Volkanovsky went through. I saw him have to exert himself to the max, strength-wise, technique-wise. That just takes an incredible gas tank. And he's even came out and told us that he'd be lying to us if he were to say that he was anywhere close to being as good in shape as he was back in February when these guys originally fought. All right, I'm gonna be. I'm not gonna to lie to everyone's face and say, "Oh no, I'm in the exact same shape." Like you know, what I mean, it's a complete lie. But um, if anyone can do five rounds, literally at this notice, it's me. Uh, yeah, we'll try and make sure it doesn't go five rounds. Uh, I want to finish it early. I don't want to test this tank gas tank. Don't get me wrong. I reckon I can do it, but let's not try and test it. Let's just finish him nice and early. And I've also been looking at the body of Alexander Volkanovsky. I've been looking at his build recently because he's looking a little bit flabby. And I'm looking at this bandage that he has on his arm. And although he may be a month and a half removed from the surgery or maybe even two months removed, it's still got to be relatively compromised because he's wearing a bandage on it. And that's never the best sign. I'm sure he's going to be able to throw some hands early. It's just that he looks slimmer, man. I mean, I'm going to show you guys two photos of Volkanovsky. I'm going to show you guys a Volkanovsky photo from February when he was facing off at Makhachev, and I'm going to show you guys a photo of Volkanovsky now, what he's looking like today. Just look at the face. 
I mean, on the left, you're looking at a Volkanovsky that's filled out. His face is looking big. It's looking dense. It's not just obviously added muscle, but he was carrying more fat and more mass moves more mass. He was just a bigger guy, a bigger human being. I mean, I'm looking at this photo right now that's on screen of Volkanovsky, and you can see his back where he's facing off with Makashev in the cage. He just looks like a tank. Remember, he took seven months to bulk up to that size. Seven months of preparing with bigger grapplers, high-level judokas, high-level wrestlers. Once again, I'm getting back to the strength. I'm getting back to the conditioning. I think Volk can make this very competitive. But what's going to happen when he doesn't have the same gas tank in the third? What's going to happen when he doesn't have the same gas tank in the fourth if he gets tagged with a big shot? You guys know how important it is in order to take a punch well to at least have your wits about you, to have good conditioning. There's a reason why some of the best cardio fighters in the UFC can recover so quickly from getting dropped. Case in point, Alexander Volkanovsky getting dropped by Makashev in the first round, him getting stung by Makashev in the second round. His cardio was off the charts. And I just think it's going to be harder for him to battle through adversity to get out of these gritty positions. And Makashev's going to make him work so unbelievably hard to have success. And just imagine if you're Islam Makashev going into this rematch and you know that Volkanovsky's probably not going to have the same strength or gas tank that he did last time. Knowing that you kind of underestimated his striking and his ability to get out of bad positions in your first fight, I'm not going to be surprised if Makhachev just makes this a clinch fest early on. I'm not going to be surprised if we see a heavy grappling approach from Makhachev to just tire out Volk, to make him work, to make him grind to get out of those bad positions, knowing that he's not going to have the same ability to push hard for five. And that's where it really kind of makes it difficult for Volkanovsky because, again, because he had such a good gas tank in the first fight, because he was so unbelievably prepared, Makhachev made him work, but Volkanovsky also forced Makhachev to work as well. Volkanovsky, knowing how unbelievably strong and explosive he is, matched with the skill, it's a tiring fight for anyone, but I just think it's going to be a little bit um, one-sided this time. I think Makhachev's going to go out there, get a hold of him, take the wind out of Volkanovsky's sails, and start to adopt a more heavy striking approach in the later rounds. Whereas last time he went out there trying to chin Volkanovsky because he thought he could just bully him around. And he thought that if he were to take him down, he would get him out of there with ease. I think there's going to be a little bit more urgency for Makhachev to control the chaos early on, to take away that knockout KO chance from Volkanovsky. You know, whether or not he's able to do anything with these clinch exchanges, I think it's going to pay dividends as the fight progresses. And I just think that's probably going to be his game plan. If Volkanovski's going in there more aggressive than he was last time, Makhachev just level changes. That's all he's got to do. And yeah, Volkanovski might stuff it, but how many of those takedowns can he stuff? And not only that, how many times can he get back up to his feet once he's taken down? Because as this fight progresses, all of that's going to get harder. And Makhachev's a bigger guy, and Volkanovsky, he's just not as big as he was. And I know that that is going to make a difference. And I just, at the end of the day, I can't rely on Volkanovsky's knockout power because although we've seen him knock out Yair Rodriguez, he tagged him with a pitch-perfect shot. He was the one that was imposing his will. He was the guy that was, you know, a, the physical presence in the octagon that night that had kind of made Yair a little bit tired, and he had time to set up that shot. It's harder to set things up on Makashev because, once again, he punishes you whenever you close the distance, and all he's got to do if it gets a little bit hairy for him is he's got a level change. He's got a clinch. Makashev really started to come on strong with his clinch striking in the later rounds, and once again, Volk was getting hit with monstrous knees to the chin in that fifth and final round. One of the reasons why he was able to take them so well and not really have them affect him is because of the gas tank, because of that five-round condition, because he had that added size that's just there to help you take a better shot. And I'm just looking at this matchup for Volk, and again, I think it's going to be competitive, but... Once he starts to deteriorate, once he starts to slow down a little bit, I think he's going to get a little bit more frustrated in the later rounds if he starts to have a lack of success. And I think that if Makhachev tags him with something good in the clinch, if Makhachev tags him with something good on the feet, I think he's going to be able to put him away and I think he's going to be able to knock him out. 
Volkanovsky actually does have a pretty good chin. And I need to say this. One of the reasons why people write his chin off and say it's not great or whatever, I actually think it's good, is because of that second fight with Max Holloway where Pillow Hands Max dropped Alexander Volkanovsky multiple times. And we have to remember, and it's actually very clear now, the UFC brass has came out and told us Hunter Campbell and Jeff Nowitzki, Alexander Volkanovsky has spoken on this as well, is he was woken up in the middle of the night and he was forced to take a piss test from USADA and he couldn't. He couldn't go to the bathroom, so we needed to wait an hour until he could. And by the time he gave them the sample, he tallied up a max two hours of sleep. And when you're sleep deprived, well, your brain doesn't function as well. There's a little bit more of an off switch. Other than that, I mean, we haven't seen Volkanovski get wobbled once in his championship reign. I've seen him eat flush elbows from Brian Ortega. I've seen him eat like flush strikes to the chin, like big knees in the clinch against Islam Makhshev in the fifth round. He got stumbled once in that fight and dropped to one knee. But again, his eyes aren't rolling back. He's not getting wobbled. He's, he's not looking dazed. I mean, Yair Rodriguez was able to catch him with a couple of grazing head kicks as well. And Volk ate them like Tic Tacs. So I don't think his chin is going to suffer. It's just that if he starts to get a little bit more tired, the power of Makhachev, which I believe is going to be a little bit more buffed up, not only because he'll be bigger, but also because I'm expecting him to be a little sharper this time around because he's just getting better. He's, he's still young. He's still in the beginning of his championship reign. And he's been preparing for a, a monster like Charles who's coming out there to take his head off too. I just think that Volkanovski is going to be more susceptible to getting knocked out. I think he's going to be more susceptible to getting rocked this time around in the later rounds when he will not have the same gas tank and the size and the grappling of Makhachev starts to wear on him. So guys, ultimately, I'm picking Islam Makhachev to knock Volkanovski out in the fourth round. Again, I'm not going to be surprised if Volkanovski makes it to a decision and makes it close, um, but still... I think he's going to start to fade a little bit. And the fight was awfully close last time. But even when Volkanovski had perfect conditions, he still lost the fight, man. Makhachev still made him work tooth and nail for every single position. And it's so unbelievably tiring to get out of those bad positions. It's so unbelievably tiring to mitigate the risk of a nasty counter striker with devastating power like Makhachev has. And also a threat of the takedown. So it's just a tall task, man. Um, how can Volkanovski win this fight? I think he's got to have a more leg kick heavy approach because Makhachev couldn't catch his kicks. And one of the reasons Volkanovski wasn't throwing a whole lot of them, I believe, is because he was worried about getting his kicks caught. But also because Volkanovski's kicks set up his combinations. He can draw out counters from his opponents and he can switch his stances off of kicks as well and counter with shots that his opponents won't see. That's how he was able to knock Yair Rodriguez out. I talked about this in a video that I made a couple of days ago on how Volkanovski could win. I think Volk's going to need to go out there and knock him out. But once again, I just don't see him having that kind of devastating power. I saw him land really good flush shots on the chin of Makhachev that Makhachev didn't really expect early on when Volk had the quick twitch ability. And as the fight progressed, he kind of lost that a little bit. I get it. He dropped Makhachev in the fifth. More of a flash knockdown, and Makhachev was tired because Volkanovski was wearing on him. And I mean, for goodness gracious, I didn't even bring this up, but Volkanovski took Makhachev down in that fight. I don't know if they counted it as one, but there was a moment in either the second or third where Volkanovski kind of fucking muscles him to the ground for a second. He needed that kind of extra bit of gas tank. That He needed that five-round cardio to do that. So yeah, man, it, it's just an unbelievably tall task. Makhachev's been getting better. I think he's going to learn a lot from that loss of Volkanovski. You know, I just watched the countdown show as well, and, and he's there watching his fight with Volk with Habib. And I think given that Habib is so invested in being a good coach, even though he's not showing up to all the fights, he's still coaching. Having a guy like Habib in your corner, having a guy that also has an unbelievable fight IQ that can help you make adjustments as a grappler is just really important. And um, again, Makhachev's going to be in his backyard. There's not as much pressure that was on him last time. And I think the, I think he's just in a perfect place to win this fight against Volkanovski. So unfortunately, guys, we've got about another week left of Volkanovski being a solidified top five all-time fighter. 
And if he loses this fight, although he'll still be up there for me and it doesn't diminish his legacy that much because he is taking this on short notice, it's going to be devastating for him. I mean, this is a, the thing that I, that I wanted to bring up. If he loses this fight, it's not just that that loss itself is such a bad look. It's that he's 35. And if he gets knocked out, getting KO'd at the age of 35 is not good for your longevity, especially when you're going to have to cut down to 45 and face Ilya Teporia, who's got absolutely filthy KO power. So yeah, I'm kind of dreading this, guys. I'm expecting Makhachev to go in there and clean him up, but it's going to be competitive early. I think Volkanovski is going to be making him work. I think he's going to be able to get up from a couple of takedowns, but at the end of the day, if he doesn't finish him, he's going to start to tire out, and um, yeah, that's that's just how it's going to go. <laughs> I hope I'm I hope I'm wrong, but yeah. Until next time.